This is To The Point with Michael Williams. Good morning. We check in today with state lawmakers from our area, Republican and Democrat, on election reform and bright future debates. And in a non-COVID focus, we begin with Republican State Senator Gail Harrell from District 25 covering St. Lucie Martin in part of Palm Beach County. Reshaping a road building blueprint is key for the Transportation Committee chair and it could indirectly benefit local traffic concerns. Well, first, I want to say thank you so much for having me. I'm delighted to be here. And uh, really, I'm very excited about the session as we're getting things really going. We're actually today halfway through. So as we move forward, there's many issues that are top of the mind to me. And I'm very excited that one of the bills that I am uh, that I'm actually sponsoring will be on the floor tomorrow for special order. I don't know if we're going to uh, actually roll it over and, run and uh, pass it out tomorrow, but it really deals with how we address roads in the state of Florida. Several years ago, we passed uh, what was called MCORs that really established three major new turnpikes. And we put in place as part of that uh, three very distinct studies. And we asked people to come and very, very specifically look at the economic impact of those roads, look at the environmental impact of those roads, and also the strategic development for the state of Florida. And uh, those reports have come back. And of course, uh, we're not as positive as we thought they might be and really raised some issues that I think need to be addressed. And uh, we also, because of the pandemic, have had major, major financial problems in the state of Florida with a $2, million, $2 billion shortfall of dollars. And in our transportation trust fund, uh, because people weren't driving, they're still not driving to the extent they were. Uh, we've had a real decrease in the amount of dollars we have coming into our transportation trust fund. Very significant decrease, $900 million decrease. Senator, as a practical matter, uh, as a practical matter, then what will your bill do in terms of uh, transportation roads for your constituency? What we're doing is totally rethinking it. And we've repealed that, we will be within this bill, repealing that legislation and really kind of refocusing our transportation dollars and looking within our existing road system and how do we rebuild, redo, expand our existing road system rather than going through pristine areas and establishing new major turnpikes that might divide communities, might divide sections of, of large counties and things that really might have a significant environmental impact. In a historically <laughs> environmentally sensitive community as the one you served, do you believe this strikes more of a balance to that environmental sensitivity? Was that one of the reasons for your push to say, wait a minute, let's relook? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I've been a real advocate for really doing things in a very environmentally safe way. We've put huge resources into stopping the releases from Lake Okeechobee. I did that legislation uh, six years ago, really to make sure we have dollars, consistent, dedicated dollars going into that. So the environment's always been a big issue for me. And I was very concerned, uh, not just from the uh, financial feasibility side, but also from the impact on the environmental side. So I'm excited that this bill is moving forward. Uh, it will be on the floor tomorrow and hopefully passed out either tomorrow or first of next week. Before we move on with it effectively, and if this is too simplistic, I know you'll 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 say so, but will it mean less roads in terms of new ones going through Martin County, but better expansion of existing ones? Will that be the bottom line you hope will be the end result? Well, it doesn't truly impact Martin County directly in that there would, would have been new roads sure. in Martin County. It's more on the West Coast and up into, it's extending sure. uh, up into coming from Naples up to the Orla, up right. to uh, the Tampa Bay area, and then also on the West Coast. What it does for Martin County, especially in, uh, in some of our areas, on our rural arterials, it's going to put dedicated dollars into those areas to really look at communities that are having an impact by increased traffic and truck traffic in particular. So we can look, say, in Western St. Lucie and Western Martin County, where we are starting to see major truck traffic. It will give us the dedicated dollars that they can apply for uh, through the Transportation Trust Fund to make sure that we do bypasses and we go around our communities 
and we don't go through our communities. Senator, thank you for walking us through the legislation, giving us a nice education on the direct and really indirect effects of what it does in terms of a shift of focus. I do want to ask you in our remaining time, election reform has been a big issue. Republicans talking about the need for election reform. Democrats are saying uh, it's a solution in search of a problem. 2020 went well. They say, well, we're going to have voter suppression. Briefly, your thoughts on election reform. Well, I think it's a step forward in the right direction. Uh, uh, we have been so successful in Florida since 2000. And I remember distinctly the election in 2000 and hanging chads, pregnant chads. Uh, I always joke, well, we'll never have a kid named Chad again in the state of Florida. <laughs> we, have, we have made incremental improvements. This is another incremental improvement so that we continue to be in the forefront we want to make sure that our uh, vote by mail ballots are accurate. Uh, I think extending the numbers of days that for the supervisors to count those is really very important. The governor did that by executive order because of the pandemic, but moving forward, we wanted to make that uh, in statute. So now the supervisors can actually start uh, counting those early votes and absentee votes up to 45 days before the actual election day. Also to make sure that uh, that the signatures are accurate, you know, and people as you get older. <laughs> I, I raise my change, hand, right? You know, I qualify. Uh, your signatures, signatures change. So by requiring that you every year, if you want an absentee ballot, it'll go for the whole election cycle. You do that and you have, so your signature may have changed. And that way you'll know that you're absent, that it's you getting it. So also, it's, Okay. Senator, I apologize. There's so much we can talk about, but I do I do need to ask you about one more uh, item before sure. we have to um, uh, uh, wrap up. And Bright Futures has people concerned. There's been a push by one of your Republican colleagues to change it uh, and to say, well, we'll put Bright Futures money toward majors that will lead to a job. That's gotten a lot of pushback. A lot of people whose kids rely on Bright Future and families are saying, what's going on? What's going to be the end result in your mind? What do you think about it? Well, I had some issues with it, too. I have four grandchildren, uh, three grandchildren right here in Florida. I have eight altogether, you know, for whom I hope Bright Futures will be there. And I, I'm, you know, I share people's concern. I want to make sure that we keep our brightest and best here in the state of Florida. But we also have to make sure that they know what good majors are and what leads to jobs. So I'm really happy with the transformation of the bill. It has majorly changed. Uh, yesterday, as it passed out of committee, uh, it really becomes a transparency tool for students, and it requires that colleges and universities really look across the uh, the economy in the state of Florida and evaluate what jobs are really out there, and that they inform their students. Every freshman will have to get from their college what of the majors in in that university really lead to real jobs and also say what the amount of money they might make and what opportunities there are. But without, so but without allocating money based on the major you ultimately pick. Correct. Okay. It, there, the strike all amendment in a committee yesterday made major changes and it is no longer limiting or excluding people who are majoring in certain areas uh, from bright futures. What is this saying is we want you to make the choice that works for you, but you need the information to know that maybe that major in underwater basket weaving won't lead to a good job. So by informing you and requiring universities to do those studies as to what the potential of that major might lead you to, uh, it'll give students the tools to make good decisions. We, of course, will keep you up to date on where her legislation stands. Next up, Palm Beach County Democratic State Senator Bobby Powell and his legislative focus.